In our final session on inventory valuation, we are going to look at valuing our inventory based on the weighted average method. So all we do here is calculate the average price or the average cost for our inventory. And we will use that to value any issues we make to production. We will also use it to value our closing inventory. The key to getting questions on the weighted average method correct is that you just must always remember we calculate a new average after each receipt. So our average cost of inventory will only change each time we buy new inventory from our supplier at perhaps a different price to the price we paid last time. So the only time we have to calculate a new average is after we have received new inventory from our supplier. So let's have a look at a question. So we're asked, using the following information from Holly Park Limited, produce a stores ledger showing the cost of issues and the closing stock value. And we should pre prepare our ledgers using the weighted average method. So we're given then all our inventory movements for December 2010. Now what we are going to see is that our calculations and our table under the weighted average method are far more straightforward than they were under the FIFO and the LIFO method. And that's because when we're using the weighted average method, we don't need to keep track separately of our different batches of material received. So if we have a look then, all we need under our weighted average method, we're going to have a column for our item. So starting with our opening balance and then we'll have some receipts and issues during the period. The number of units, the unit cost, total value, and then our inventory average cost. So, beginning with our opening inventory then, we're told in the question this is 300 units with a value of two pounds each, total value of 600 pounds, no calculations necessary, our average cost per unit, two pounds. What do we have next? Well, we're told on the 7th of December, we received 200 units costing us £2.20 each. Okay, so the 7th of the 12th, the receipt. Straight away, we know we are going to be calculating a new average because we have had a receipt. The units were 200, costing us £2.20 each. Total cost, 440. Now we just need to know, after this receipt, what is our average cost per unit. To calculate that, very straightforward, we just need to know how many units do we now have in our inventory in total. That'll be 500. And what is the total value of that inventory? Total value is £1,040. So our average then is just the total value divided by the number of units. So 1,040 divided by 500 gives us £2.08. So this is our new average cost per unit. Moving on, the next thing we have on the 8th of December is an issue of 400 units. So 8th of December, an issue. 
So we are sending inventory over to our production department. This will reduce the number of units we have sitting in our inventory. Now, how do we value our issue to production? Very straightforward. We just value it at our most recent average cost per unit. So that will be £2.08. So the total value of our issue is £832. Our average cost doesn't change when we have an issue to production. Average cost will only change after a receipt. So now our totals are, we have 100 units left with a value of 1,040 minus 832, 208. Okay, our next item then is a receipt of 250 units on the 11th of December. It's a receipt, so we know after this we will be calculating a new average. So adding our information in, the 11th of December, a receipt, 250 units, costing £2.50 each, 625 in total. So to calculate our average cost per unit, we just need to know how many units do we now have in total and what's the total value. Well, I would say we have 350 units in our inventory now with a total value of £833, which means our average cost, 833 divided by 350, gives us an average cost of £2.38. Our next item... On the 14th of December, we have an issue of 200 units, so that will reduce our inventory holdings. And how will we value our issue? We will value it at the most recent available average cost, so £2.38. 38. That gives us a total issue value of 476 and our average cost doesn't change. So after our issue on the 14th of the 12th then, we have 150 units left in our inventory with a value of 776. Excuse me, 357 pounds. Next we have another receipt. So a receipt on the 17th of December for 150 units, costing £2.80 each. We know whenever we have a receipt, we are going to have to calculate a new average. So the total value of the receipt was 420. So now we have 300 units in our inventory, the total value of 777. So our average cost per unit, 777 divided by 300, gives us £2.59. And then finally, we have our last issue of 200 units, excuse me, of 100 units on the 20th of December. We know that we will issue those units at our most recent average cost, £2.59. So the total value of the issue is £259. So at the end of the period then, we have a closing inventory of 200 units with a value of £518. 
So that will be our opening inventory for the next period. Our final method of valuing inventory is to use a periodic weighted average. Now the periodic weighted average is a very different approach to our FIFO, LIFO and weighted average. Because if we're using a periodic average, then we are not valuing our inventory day by day during the period. So every time we issue to production, we are putting a value on that issue. Rather, if we are using the periodic weighted average method, then we wait until the end of the period. And at the end of the period, we'll calculate it will calculate one average cost per unit for that period. And we will retrospectively then value all of our issues at that periodic weighted average. Now this is a more straightforward method than our FIFO, LIFO and weighted average methods. If we're using the periodic weighted average, then all we do is calculate our periodic weighted average as being equal to the cost of receipts for the period plus the value of our opening inventory divided by the number of units received during the period plus the units in our opening stock. If we were to apply this then to our previous exercise, Holly Park Limited, we would calculate our periodic weighted average The total cost of all of our receipts, so that will be 440 plus 625 plus 420 plus the value of our opening inventory which was 600 and divided by number of units received 200 plus 250 plus 150 plus 300. And we get £2.32 as our periodic weighted average. So remember, this is something we can only do at the end of the period. Because it's only then we know what our total receipts were and what the total cost of our receipts were. After we've calculated our periodic weighted average for the period, then we would go back and put a value on each of our issues. During the period on the 8th of December, we issued 400 units. If we value that now at £2.32 each, the total value of the issue is £928. On the 14th of the 12th, we issued 200 units, value of 232, 464. 20th of the 12th, 100 units issued, value of 232 each, so 232 pounds in total. And finally, we would then value our closing inventory, which was 200 units at 232 each. Our closing inventory value would be £464. So very straightforward, and the periodic weighted average method has the advantage of putting the same value on all of our issues so it might be easier to understand. The problem with this approach, approach, of course, is we have to wait until the end of the period to know what the cost of each issue was.